Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well and today we're going to talk about Card Factory which, which has had an amazing couple of weeks and when we talk about this company and where we're at with Card Factory right now because like I say it's gone up well something like 100% really over the last couple of weeks and uh, yeah we'll do a little bit of a mini update on this one. Um, but yeah, it's kind of been forgotten because the US uh, tech stocks have been going down so much, but some of the UK stocks have been putting in some uh, fantastic uh, growth on the stock side of it over the last couple of uh, weeks really, So, uh, and this is one of them, so uh, let's talk about Card Factory and do a little bit of a mini update into this one. I want to say for yesterday's video, um, thank you so much for smashing the like button, and honestly, like, um, I, it's hard to like show that as a creator, but like the the reach that video goes to as like an audience is so much better. Um, like it's my number one viewed video over like the last 10 videos. So yeah, if you guys smash the like button, honestly, like that's all I ask for. I really, honestly, I really appreciate it when you do it because it just helps the video go out so much further. Uh, but yeah, um, I think we should make 300 likes to uh, target on every video. So uh, yeah, if you could, that'd be absolutely amazing. But yeah, we'll do some uh, updates in Card Factory because like I say, it has had a fantastic kind of couple of weeks where the stock has now gone up over 100%. And I think there's a few key points to go through here with Card Factory. So first of all, uh, the first point I'm going to make is know your stock. Now, as a YouTuber, honestly, it is probably like the most criticised, one of the most criticised jobs you can do because you literally have like all your investments out there, and it's just so easy for people to like criticise you as like an investor and say like, oh, you recommend this stock and it's down and so much, and like. Um, Sometimes people like judge you so early, like I was buying Card Factory like maybe four or five months ago or something uh, when I posted that I was buying some Card Factory shares and I think like when I started buying them the stock kind of went down maybe 20%, 30% and you know people judge you over like a, a long term investment like for two to five years off the first two months and it's like I'm not investing in this for like the next two months, I'm investing in it for the next like you know two, two to five years and like I said, people on the internet can be so so quick to judge you, and it, it's such a hard thing because you know um, you're putting all your investments out there, your your opinions, and I never delete any videos or anything. You know, you are always have the ability to get criticised over investments, but I think sometimes people forget like these investments are in the long term, not what's going to happen next week. And you know, Card Factory was one of those stocks that went down a little bit, but now we're starting to see the long term investment starting to kick in, and uh, definitely now we've got an end date of where the shops are going to open for Card Factory, it's been positive and that's really helped the stock um, start to recover because we've got kind of an end date where it'll get back to uh, operating. And I've seen that so many times, like, you know, sometimes people can judge a, a, a stock. I mean, I've seen one right now with eHang, for example. Judging a, a stock over, a stock that you're investing for in two to five years' time off the first two months. And in the first, I've always said on this channel, like the first six to 12 months when you buy a stock, it doesn't matter where that stock goes, you know? The stock can go down, it can go up, it's, it just depends what's going on in the market, you know? It's a 50-50 shot if it goes up or down. And one of the other stocks that I bought a while ago, which was, I think, 2019, was Tesla. Um, and if you take it on the split basis, that was like a $50 stock, it went down, a fair bit down to like $40, uh, it was down 20% and people were like, oh, Tesla's an absolute awful stock. You look now, Tesla's like, um, you know, $600. Uh, seen it with Pinterest, Pinterest was a stock, started buying, stock went down 20% uh, and now it's up 300%. And, um, you know, it's quite easy to criticize what a stock is doing in the first two months of buying, but you're not investing for the first two months. You're investing for, you're a long-term investor, you're investing down the line. And that's what people have to remember, you know, it was quite easy to look at Card Factory and go, oh, it's not done anything for the first two months. In fact, I'm down 20%. But the point is, is that you're not investing for that kind of, um, you know, time frame. You're investing for a long-term investment and to judge a long-term investment of, of the first two months, honestly, is criminal. And the thing as well is like, if you know your stock, you have confidence to hold it. Like at no point in Card Factory was I like, nervous about holding it you know i knew the company in and out same with the other companies like and I, I had my bull case i'm not judging it out off the first two months performance i'm seeing where it goes in the long term and if you know your company and you do your research if you do your dd into a company you will have confidence to hold that company now don't get me wrong when i was buying card factory i was like hey you know this is definitely one more of the riskiest stocks i'm looking at there's also the uh you know they're not great on the balance sheet, there's a risk of bankruptcy and it could go wrong. So it's a spec stock, spec stocks, you know, you wanna keep them nice and nice small positions. And uh, sometimes that's what I've seen, especially what's been criminal over the last three, three four months is that people have got 
uh, so much confidence that they're putting spec stocks as like number one positions and if it goes wrong they get absolutely burned from it and they lose so much wealth in it you know i've always said that you know this is a company which is higher risk um, and also that you should make it a big position uh, but these are the facts that i have and that i believe that it will work out for the company and it's starting to kick on right now you know the stock is up 100 percent, and i still think there's a lot more upside from here so that's just a little thing on like card factory because i i tell you what like the some of the comments that i got on card factory if, like for some reason everyone that had put the negative comments has now deleted them like i, I know it's that so often like um like gwp h the other month when they got bought out like so many comments were like oh you, you, you don't know what you're doing and then like the long-term plan starts kicking in all of a sudden you see them like uh troll comments and suddenly get deleted for some reason so uh, i thought that was something really interesting because this is a another example of believing in your company uh that's you know and holding it holding it for long term you know long term investor um you know i'm sure a couple of people might be being scared off with what happened over card, card factory over the last two three months and now that it's starting to get the recovery going i'm sure they kind of missed a few of these gains so i think that was a good point to make you know know your company believe in it and invest in it for the long term not what it's going to be at in the next week next month now next point this is a question that i've got asked quite a lot now because people are up 50 percent, 70 percent, 100 percent um should i sell my company now personally i'm not going to sell um card factory um you know that's that's a question i've been asked a lot but I am going to say, listen, there's nothing wrong with taking profit. I never blame anyone for taking profit in a company because at the end of the day, if you're investing into the stock market, you're putting your hard-earned money into companies and you're putting them into the companies in the hope that you make money. If you make money, there is never anything wrong with taking profit. Like if, if all you do is take profit, you are not a bad investor. You're a good investor. You know, you're making money. And that's, that's the end of the game. As long as you're making money in the stock market, I will never say to anyone you're a bad investor because you sold at this point. Like, profit is profit. And that is, you know, 100% the aim of the game. And if you do that, no one can ever say you're a bad investor. And I think sometimes that can be... One thing that's pressed on a few people is like, oh, what happens if the stock goes up another 100%, 200%? I always say, like, it, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. As long as you make money on the stock market that's all you, that's the main thing and you've achieved it and um yeah so i think people ask me quite a bit on now card factory like should i should i sell my stock i said if you want to go for it i'm personally not selling but i would not blame you because you've invested into a bit of a higher risk company at some point you would have been down 20 30 percent and uh, now you've got some gains to you know show for it and uh, there's nothing wrong with that i would not blame you at all but personally, I'm not doing that and I'll go on to a little bit later. But don't be scared, you know, if you've made a decent amount of money in a certain amount of time, definitely nothing wrong with that. Now, one thing I'm going to say about Card Factory is that cash will probably still need to be raised in the next coming few months. It's not looking too bad because we are seeing a lot of creditors start to be waived. I think they're being waived to the end of March now. Um, and obviously, we've got the stores that will probably open in April. So we've only kind of got like, I think it's April the 21st off the top of my head. So we've only got kind of like a 21 day gap where there's like maybe creditors and everything like that and might be a little bit tricky period but just because they will be so short on cash on that balance sheet i will say that a cash raise will need to happen at some point for card factory just a few million you know um just a few million um, but yeah i think a, a cash raise is still needing to be happen and i do think they will get a cash raise like it just doesn't i can i said this a few months ago with card factory i just can't see the point now of like you know card factory does have a lot of debt it's the negative of the company it does have a lot of debt but i can't see why these banks that have lent card factory would now say oh look we're not going to give you any more money because card factory are like hey you know what in one month we're going to have all of our stores operating again and we're going to have revenue coming back into our stores so that's that's a positive there historically good revenue growth we maybe the profit has gone down a little bit but we've still been a very decent profitable company and you know if you just give us an extra couple of months cash you know we will you don't lose all your money all the debt you've given us and we will be able to start paying your debt back so it makes no sense from a lender's point of view to not give them a little bit more cash now because 
if they don't, they just lose all the cash they've lent them. And Card Factory at a point were like, you know, we can start paying you. We're, we're, a, pro we're a good, decent company. You know, we, we normally make profit. We will start paying you money back in the next few months. And it just won't make sense now not to lend money. So I still say like it's a 50-50 risk. Um, but at the same time, um, as every day gets closer to April, I'm getting more and more confident in this company. Um, so yeah, I still think that there's still risk on. It should still be a spec position that is a very small percentage of your portfolio. Um, but at the same time, um, it is every day that goes on the card factory is looking better and better. And you've seen that in the share price. You know, people are kind of like rotating into card factory now going, okay, you know, this is probably worth a little bit of a shot here. You know, the balance sheet isn't amazing, but you've got a company that has decent revenue growth, is a profitable company, has lost, I don't know what it was, like 80% of its, its its share price value over the last few years. And it's like a few people are willing to take this punt now and you can see it, you know, people are seeing like we've got an end goal where Card Factory should be okay. Uh, and that's the thing, you know. Um, so there's that point of view there, you know, uh, but I think it's starting to look quite positive on that front. Uh, the next thing is, let's not forget that, you know, Card Factory, historically was a company that improved revenue but the profit got hurt a little bit still doing decent amount of profit don't get me wrong it's not an unprofitable business but the profit was shrinking down the thing is to remember that from last from a year ago there's been a lot of strong new partnerships set up with card factory which will then help it going forward you've got a lot of more supermarket deals you've got the reject store deal which i think is huge you know that's what 300 plus stores are in now uh, in australia that's only going to help uh, the, the revenue going forward and hopefully profit as well. Um, hopefully they can do a few more of these reject deals uh, in other countries as well. That's what I would like them to see, uh, let's see them do. Um, so you've got that. You've got the online sales. The online sales have been growing like, I think the last earnings report was something like 70% or something uh, on online sales. So online sales are better than ever. The, the, the site is getting better, they've got an app now. So you've got a lot more online presence, hopefully that's what they grow as well to try and compete with someone like a Moonpig for example. So the online presence is a lot better, a lot more stars that they're in as well. Um, so yeah, from that point of view, like the income streams for uh, Card Factory have only got stronger over the last 12 months. So you add that into the, the business model that they had previously, and then you add in better online sales, more partners, I think that's only going to help it going forward. So um, yeah, hopefully, like I only can see twenty, maybe twenty twenty one because it'll still be closed. But like twenty twenty two revenue, I can only see that being higher than like twenty nineteen's revenue. So yeah, everything from that point of view is pretty good. You know, it, it will be in a better place than what it was pre pre pandemic. Um, so yeah. So I guess this kind of leads me on to my last question, which is, where would I sell? Because I said like you know, don't blame me if you take profit. You know, the aim of the game is to make money. You make money, you sell. Uh, and it's still a very high risk stock, you know, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but where would I sell? Because I said I'm not going to sell uh, at the moment. So I always said when I got into this company, like, I've taken a lot of risk. And if Card Factory was to do quite well in the next few, um, next few months, next few years, the average that I have, I will never get back. You know, I always say this about a lot of these, you know, stocks that have been hurt because of uh, the CV. You know, a lot of these averages you have, you will never get again. And that's the same with Card Factory. I won't get this average again if this company uh, carries on doing what it's doing. And for me, when I look at Card Factory, I see that the share price the stock has been absolutely killed off. And I see at some point that it will get back to at least 2019's revenue and profit. And I think it will get to that point. You know, let's not forget is we, we've got, only at the moment we've got like an exit date when everything gets back to normal. And we're not even factoring in yet. Okay, what if Card Factory gets back to 2019's revenue, 2019's profit? And I think it will do that. I don't think, obviously, I don't think it will do it this year in 2021. Um, I think there's a good chance it will do it in 2022. Uh, 2022. And if not, maybe 2023, but I would expect it probably in 2022. I would see, I wanna see a decent back end of 2021, you know, strong uh, sales after like um, summertime, hopefully a strong Christmas sale as well. 
but in 2022 I see Card Factory putting in some decent numbers. Now let's just say that in 2022, and like I say it might be 2023, uh, but let's say it puts in 2019's revenue and profit. If we take that into consideration and the price that it's currently at, I think it would mean that this company is still at the moment at a P ratio of something about five. Now you think about the industry the, or the market average, I mean it's about an 18 or 20 P ratio. So I don't think Card Factory will ever trade at the valuations of the industry, the market, like it's just not that company, you know, it's it's always gonna be a bit of a disrespected company that will be below the market market average. And I'm fine saying that, you know, it's never gonna be a massive risk, respected company. But if it does that, the company is still at like a 5P ratio, which is 100% a very cheap valuation, 100%. Like in my opinion, it should at least trade at a 10 PE ratio, um, and that's obviously if it puts the 2019 um, revenue and profit in. So I think that, in my opinion, Card Factory should trade somewhere around about one pound twenty to one pound fifty company, and that's where I see the company going. Um, so you know it, that still gives it nearly 100% upside from where it is right now. So I still think there's a 100% upside in this company. The thing as well is my average is like 40p-ish, so that would mean that I would actually then go make probably just over 300% on this company. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm at like, I've took a high risk and I don't wanna sell out just for 100% gain. I wanna take a high risk and then see a 300% return within the next kind of 12, 12 to 24 months. So yeah, for me, in my opinion, I still see quite a bit of upside here. Um, and I, like I say, I think that, I don't know if it will be this year or next year or the year after but somewhere in the coming few months years i still think there's a lot of upside like i think when the company starts putting in its old revenue and profit which i think it will do in 2022 so i still see myself probably holding this company yet for another you know 18 months really um maybe even a bit longer uh, but i still i'm still going to hold this company and like i say i still think from here i still expect it to go up probably double from where it is right now and like I say, from my averages there, that will probably mean that I get a 300% return on this company where I'd be a lot happy to sell. Um, I, you know, I, I took a big risk on this company and uh, I want to get quite big returns for it. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. So yeah, I'm not anywhere near selling it just yet. Um, don't get me wrong. If the company was to go into that sort of range within the next kind of three months, I would probably sell it, you know, but that's realistically the time frame that I see it getting there. So yeah, that's probably where I would sell. So that's hopefully gives you a lot of insight into like my opinions on different situations and obviously a target where I would sell. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you could smash the like button, let me know if you have Card Factory shares and how much you're up as well. I've seen a few guys like putting on comments how much you're doing or how much you're up on Card Factory, which is amazing. If you do want to join my Patreon where I always post when I'm buying and selling companies, there's a link to that. And if you do want to start buying some shares in stocks, there's a link to a free trade account. You join through there, you also get a free share as well, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, and yeah, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you on the next video.